The fourth talk is entitled this way, Buddhist Practices, Threefold Learning, Chan, and Invocation of Buddha's Name. Now, um, the topic for this conference, for this seminar, is uh, Desert Wisdom and Oriental Spirituality. But the, um, it's an immense field of the Oriental Spirituality, so we have to choose. Um, actually, I could uh, willingly choose uh, from the uh, Chinese tradition, Confucian, um, Buddhist, and Taoist. Huh? Uh, we can make also interesting reflection on uh, Taoist practice. But still, I find uh, there is greater similarity between the Buddhist practices and the desert wisdom. So uh, that's my choice of the topic. Now I will begin by a just brief um, mentioning of the threefold learning, the Buddhist threefold learning, which is quite central to the Buddhist uh, teaching and practice. Actually, it, it is a synthesis of the Buddhist practice, precepts, stillness, and wisdom. By precepts, it means uh, renouncing evil and practicing virtue including our behavior, our speech, and our mind, our thinking. And there are five basic precepts, uh, which are abstaining from killing, from stealing, from illicit sexual relations, from false speech, and from drinking wine. So these are the basic five precepts for all the uh, believers, uh, all the uh, Buddhists. And um, the reason behind these five precepts are the um, so-called three poisonous passions. They are greed, uh, greed um, anger or hatred, and delusion. Uh, they are considered as roots of all moral evil. Uh, now, after precepts, we have um, stillness. The idea is to achieve stillness through observing the precepts. And um, the term for stillness is especially samadhi, uh, means concentration attained through higher meditation, uh, focusing, concentrating. And then we come to wisdom. Uh, the idea is attaining wisdom through stillness. And uh, wisdom is not a um, speculative, speculative knowledge, but a kind of intuitive, experiential knowledge, uh, prajna, uh, that is uh, the Buddhist wisdom. Now, I would like to present two traditions, two Buddhist traditions and their practices. That is uh, uh, Zen or Chan in Chinese, and invocation of Buddha's name. Um, the um, basis for the teaching of uh, Chan Buddhism um, is the idea of the teaching on Buddha nature from Nirvana Sutra. Um, and um, the Chinese monk who developed this teaching is called uh, Zhu Dao Sheng. Uh, Buddha nature means um, something permanent. It is the truth, the reality, and the permanence um, beneath all the changing phenomena of the world. Um, then according to the Buddhist teaching, all the sentient beings are uh, endowed with the Buddha nature. It is a spiritual power which enables humans and sentient beings to become Buddha. So this Buddha nature is something universal and inherent in the um, uh, sentient beings. Now, Chan teaching is based on this uh, basic idea of the Buddha nature. And um, also, for Chan, is an immense area uh, of Buddhist teaching. So I would just choose uh, the um, episode and the teaching of the um, the sixth, the fifth, and the sixth uh, patriarch. Uh, 
Now, the, uh, when it's time for the fifth patriarch to um, look for a successor, he told the monks of the monastery uh, to write a poem, a small poem on the wall or um, anywhere, and then he would decide uh, whom to choose. And uh, so the most uh, expected candidate, uh, uh, Shen Xiu, wrote this poem. His favorite disciple, uh, the favorite disciple of the fifth patriarch, uh, Shen Xiu, wrote a verse uh, like that. The body is the body tree. The mind is like a bright mirror's stand. At all times, we must strive to polish it and must not let dust collect. But then there is another monk called uh, Hui Neng. Um, he is Il from the south uh, because the uh, monastery, uh, this monastery is situated in, the, in North China, in Henan province. And there was a certain monk from the south. Uh, he was uh, illiterate, cannot read, so he was not um, given importance in the monastery. He was serving the kitchen. And he just passed by and saw the poem, saw people looking at the poem. He asked someone to read the poem to him. And he said, no, no, it doesn't work. And the other people began to laugh at him because uh, he was just working in the kitchen. So he said, could I write a poem? And he asked someone who can write to help him. And the poem by him uh, sounds like that. Body originally has no tree. The bright mirror also has no stand. Fundamentally, there is not a single thing. Where could dust arise? And the, um, all, everybody was surprised by this uh, poem uh, from uh, Hui Neng. And then the abbot uh, passed by, uh, was just passing by. Uh, the fifth page, uh, abbot, fifth patriarch, and he read the two poems, and he said no. Also, the second poem uh, is worth nothing. Uh, he took out his shoes and uh, erased the poem of uh, Hui Neng, and then went away. But the following day, he went to see this uh, uh, Hui Neng, and. Um, um, talked to him, and uh, with his, uh, the staff of the abbot, he made a three, a hit three times the ground, and then went away. And Hui Neng got a message and went to see the, um, uh, the abbot at midnight, uh, at uh, three, we call in Chinese, the, the, um, uh, sun, uh, the third hour. Uh, so that uh, means the third hour. And the uh, abbot explained personally the uh, Diamond Sutra to him. And uh, uh, when it reached a certain phrase in the Diamond Sutra, when it reached uh, the phrase saying that a disciple should develop a mind which does not rely on anything. Hui Neng was totally uh, struck by that uh, phrase and became enlightened. And the abbot understood that and um, transmitted the, um, 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 the, the cassock of the abbot to him and telling him, you should fly away this night, otherwise you would, you would be in danger of your life. So uh, Hui Neng uh, went away, went to the south, and only after several years, he revealed his, um, um, his position. He was appointed by the, uh, the fifth patriarch as his successor, but in the south. Uh, in the north, it's Shen Xiu. Shen Xiu became the abbot. Now, what about the teaching of this sixth uh, patriarch, Master Hui Neng? Uh, his teaching is based on that uh, Diamond Sutra, that expression uh, he um, uh, was struck by. And then he wrote his own sutra, 
called the Platform Sutra, and it emphasizes on uh, this idea of um, um, being um, not attached, detachment, uh, called a, a, a kind of attitude without uh, clinging and without rejecting anything. So a kind of a total uh, detachment, which is quite similar to Evagrius' idea of apatheia or the Ignatian uh, spiritual exercises, the idea of holy indifference. Uh, these um, ideas are quite similar. And uh, so that's the teaching uh, um, of uh, Hui Nang. Now, let's make a, um, just a brief comparison between the practice of Chan, the teaching of Chan, and Jesus' prayer. We could see similarity um, in the idea of shedding of thoughts, of concentration, of replacing the 10,000 thoughts with one single thought. But immediately we should add that there are also differences. For example, the idea of um, replacing 10,000 thoughts with one single thought. We remember um, Theophan would say, to avoid all the jostling of the busy mind, we should bind our mind to one single thought or the thought of one only. That's important. It's not just to limit ourselves to one thought, but the thought of someone, some person, that is um, uh, the presence of the Lord, which is essential to the Jesus prayer. Experience the presence of Jesus, and also nourishing a love for Him, nourishing love for Him. Uh, uh, and then the idea of receiving His compassion and healing and being conformed to the image and likeness of um, Jesus. And uh, in the case of Chan, um, yes, they emphasize no thought, but we can say, we can add also no sentiment or affection uh, for anyone or for the uh, Buddha. Uh, there's a story saying that uh, a disciple was asking the Master, if during meditation I meet the uh, Buddha, what should I do? The answer is, kill him. So it means the, in the presence of Buddha is not important. But we should add um, uh, one word about this idea of no thought and no sentiment. It doesn't mean that um, the practice of Zen meditation would uh, make someone into a person without sentiment, without affection. No, that's uh, totally contrary to the Buddhist idea uh, of, uh, for them, the highest values are two, means uh, wisdom and uh, compassion, the two Buddhist values. So it doesn't mean one should become a uh, man without compassion. But during the practice of Zen, uh, sentiment and affection doesn't enter. Uh, so, um, and um, Buddha's presence is not uh, important. Uh, the Buddha is not a god in, the, in, the Buddhist, uh, in Buddhism. He can be compared to a saint or a uh, enlightened um, man, a perfect human being, and a teacher, uh, because humans become can become Buddha not through the Buddha, um, uh, the Buddha, but through their own Buddha nature. Uh, it's enough to through practice Zen practice. One should clear the mind, um, avoid all the um, uh, ignorance and uh, clinging and desire, and then finally one can see one's own true nature, the Buddha nature, and become enlightened, become nature, and become Buddha himself. So it is a kind of uh, um, the salvation, the uh, fulfillment is already within a person. Now let us come to a second tradition, a major tradition, about the uh, uh, invocation of Buddha's name in Pure Land Buddhism. Uh, we know that um, uh, this is even more, much more uh, diffused in China and in the Far East uh, Buddhism than uh, the Zen tradition or Chan tradition. Now this um, um, invocation of the name 
comes from um, a certain monk, Buddhist monk, who was the king of a, um, uh, a kingdom, and he became a monk and made 48 uh, major vows. Uh, and the number, the vows, number 18, 19, and 20 are related to the, uh, this idea that those who would wish to be reborn in his country, uh, the western country of um, pure land or infinite uh, happiness, these people should invoke his name devoutly. And at the time of his death, um, Amida, Amidaba, uh, this Buddha, will come to fetch him and bring him to the western pure land to help him become Buddha. Now the invocation is um, Namu um, uh, Amidaba. Uh, in uh, Cantonese would be Namu um, Amidaba. Uh, Namu is uh, means veneration or trust. So it means I venerate or I trust in um, Amida Buddha. Uh, now for this practice, the three things are essential for the invocation of Buddha's name. Three things are essential. Faith, wish, and practice. They are essential. And um, so uh, a famous um, uh, master, contemporary uh, master, uh, Yin Guang, says, to be reborn in the pure land depends on one's faith and desire, while one's rank depends on the practice of the invocation. Uh, now we come to a, a kind of comparison between the um, invocation of Buddha's name and the Jesus prayer. Uh, here the similarity, I would say, is uh, even greater than the similarity between um, Chan and Jesus' prayer, because here uh, we have the practice of repetition of a short prayer and invoking, invoking the name, uh, the name of Buddha and of Jesus. And also it implies trust and love towards Buddha and Jesus. So the two practices are quite are very similar. But again, we find some uh, important differences. In the Buddhist invocation, um, Amida Buddha is considered again as a saint and a teacher. He's, um, the Buddhas are not considered as gods uh, in the sense of uh, uh, one who has created the world and governs the world. There's no such god in Buddhism. So Amidaba is also a human being but enlightened a human being, a perfect uh, enlightened person, a saint, and a teacher. And his merit consider, consisted in his great vows to save all sentient beings, his good heart to save his compassion, to save all sentient beings, to lead them to Buddhahood. That's his great merit. And the practice of invocation uh, of the name um, combine, combines self-acting um, practice and external assistance of Amidaba. Uh, this practice depends on uh, the Buddha nature uh, everyone has possesses in himself and also the external assistance, the teaching of Amidaba. When one dies, Amidaba will come to bring him to the Western Pure Land and personally teach him to, be, to become uh, enlightened. Uh, but for the Jesus prayer, uh, as we say that um, the, um, yeah, in the Jesus prayer, then Jesus Christ the relationship between Jesus Christ and the, uh, and the Christian is not only the relationship between a teacher and a disciple. It is more than that. Christ is the Son of God and our Savior. Uh, he saved us not only through a making a vow to save us, but actually he experienced the events of incarnation, passion, death, resurrection. Uh, he did all this on behalf, of, on behalf of us. 
and uh, he says, I am the way, the truth, and life. Um, Buddha or Buddha Amidabha can probably also say, I am the way, the truth, but probably he cannot say I am the life, because the life, the Buddha nature, is in each one already. Uh, but Jesus is our life, and he explains that through a beautiful uh, parable, the vine and the branches. I am the vine, you are the branches. Uh, remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. If the branches are separated from the vine, it will dry up and die um, and be burned. So it means there is a uh, radical dependence of the Christian on Christ, just like the branches on the, uh, the vine, um, uh, on the uh, vine itself. It is a continuous dependence. Our life coming, is coming continuously from the source, which is Christ. Without this connection, this union with Christ, we shall not have uh, life. Uh, we shall be become dry and uh, um, be burned. Uh, so there is a similarities, but there is also um, uh, differences because the Buddhists would not think that uh, Buddha or Buddha Amidabha as the source of their life. No, each one has the uh, uh, Buddha nature in himself. The thing, the important thing, is to um, to clear up our ignorance and our, uh, uh, our um, uh, attachment, our desire, so that we can see this, our true self, our Buddha nature, and become enlightened, become Buddha ourselves. So, uh, but I would like to conclude with a very beautiful um, sentence. When I first read it, I was much uh, moved, uh, struck by it. The sentence says, throw the pearl into muddy water, and the muddy water cannot but become clear. Throw Buddha's name into a turbulent mind, and the turbulent mind cannot but become enlightened. Uh, this sentence uh, is, I think, certainly is very dear to the Buddhist, but with a small um, change, we can also make it into a Christian uh, uh, statement. Uh, throw the pearl into muddy water, and the muddy water cannot but become clear. Throw Jesus' name into a turbulent mind, and the turbulent mind cannot but become um, tranquil and peaceful. Thank you.